Hello, it's James from X-Robots. It's time for part 20 of the real working Iron Man exosuit. Last time we've been in motors that drive a drive belt that drive these ball screws and a skateboard speed controller to drive the brushless motor. I also put in feedback pots and some Arduino based electronics so that we can drive those motors and joints to specific positions. This time we're going to put pressure pads in so the suit can move when I move my legs and hopefully at least mimic my actions. In one of the previous episodes I prototyped some pressure sensors and these are using a Hall effect sensor measuring the distance from a magnet. This slides up, obviously it's on bungees or springs that pull it back and that means I can push against it and that gives me a nice linear response. This gives me much better sensitivity than a slide pot, obviously we probably only want about 5 or 10 mil actual motion and that will give me much better resolution on the sensor. However with these they're just sliding in the slots on the aluminium which means if I push here Basically it jams because this thing skews, so we need a much better solution to that so I can push right on the end or somewhere here and it slides nice and smoothly. So the solution is going to be a slightly different profile of aluminium that actually has a V slot in it. And then riding in that V is a matching V shaped wheel, in fact four of them on a nice carriage. And of course that slides really really well and it doesn't matter if you skew it because those wheels press on the inside of the V and it still runs really smoothly. We need something on there which is going to press against my shins and my feet and my hips and that's this green peg part here. So that's printed in two halves so it can be printed flat on the bed. I need to make 12 of these in total so we've got quite a lot of printing and assembly to do. So I've got 12 of those made and obviously these slide along and they'll be in pairs on one rail so they slide together so my foot or whatever will be in there and it'll push one way or the other way and in the middle we've got a little thing like this which sits in there and that will hold two Hall effect sensors and the magnets will be in the little gaps so I can measure the distance from there. Obviously we can actually turn these round as well if I need to get them closer so we can put them on that way and that means I can get the pushers quite close to each other or we can pad them out with foam. I've also got some of the Hall effect sensors made in two halves so we can actually split those out and we can make this much wider if we wanted to as well. So that'll be the case around the hips. One of the first things I've got to do is deal with the sensor that senses me pushing down. So obviously I need one under my foot that I pushes down and it moves a little bit as I tread down on it so it knows when to put the leg straight and when one leg is on the ground. Obviously I don't want to be treading on that bit of plastic with the ground underneath. So there's going to be a platform under here and this piece is going to be recessed either side with another piece so that when I push flat down my foot's actually resting on the platform made of wood or some other material and not directly on this. So here is some plywood that I've cut so obviously we've got these pieces here so that this is recessed and my foot can rest on there and that can push all the way down and obviously the sides of the feet here will go here. So the other thing is that obviously I don't have an ankle joint side to side to pivot this so the plan is to put some rubber feet on the bottom of this so basically it can sort of pivot against the ground on a single position and I don't need to worry about that extra axis. So that feels like I can lean side to side pretty well with those rubber feet on there. Obviously that makes a pivot point so I'm pretty sure that when the legs lift up, when mine lift up, that I'll be able to take some steps and that should be alright.
So at each ankle, we've got our pushing up and down slider, and we've also got a pushing front and back slider, and that's at a slight angle, because obviously I'm gonna be pushing forward and lifting up mostly. At the hips, we've got a pushing forward and a pushing back slider on each side there, because of course, when one foot is on the ground, I wanna push the hips forward to take a step with my trailing leg. Right, I've super glued my magnets in place, and I've oriented them so these stick together. And that means as the top one moves away and the bottom one moves nearer to the Hall effect sensors, we get a north pole moving further away and a south pole moving closer so they don't cancel each other out. So I've now installed my stopper stroke Hall effect sensor in the middle there, and I've tied a bit of bungee between the two and I left screw holes for this so these two things are sprung to each other. And that means as you push down the bottom one, it actually pulls the top one tighter and the same the other way round. And that means it'll measure the distance from those two Hall effect sensors and that should measure whether I'm lifting or pushing my foot down. There's a bit of a gap above my foot, so I may well put some foam in there so it's tighter on the top of my foot. But for now, we need to get those Hall effect sensors installed and see if we can get the legs to lift up. And for now, I'm just gonna work on the four Hall effect sensors for the lifting and pushing of the foot. And we'll come back to the others later for actually walking along. Here's a bag with some Hall effect sensors in, which are pretty tiny. Each one's got three wires. That's five volts ground and the signal out, which is an analog voltage. And the analog voltage will change as we move the magnets closer and further away. So I just need to wire those in and make sure we get the orientation correct so they work correctly with the way round I put the magnets. I've made these two breakout boards, each with a pair of Hall effect sensors on, one for each ankle. So that means I can solder wires on here to run up to the main control Arduino. So my breakout board is fitted and the wires run up to power and the two analog outs. So if I stick a probe on those down here, obviously we've got power down here. So we can see that we've got 4.34 volts on the top Hall effect sensor. And if I lift that, that should go down to about 2.6 or something like that. And it's quite linear as I slide it. Obviously that's the same for the other Hall effect sensor. If I stick a probe on there and push that down, we get very similar results. And that's the same on both of those, and the blue wires run up to the analog ins of the Arduino. So I've now got those Hall effect sensors wired into the Arduino, and we've got a plot there, so when I push these, we can see we get a very linear response as I uh, push one of these, and I've got four separate lines on my plot. So I'm just printing to the ser serial terminal and using the Arduino plotter. And obviously we've got a very linear response there as I push those around. Each one is a different colour, of course. So all of those are mapped in, and now we can use that to hopefully drive the motors in the right direction as I push them. If you remember from last time, I had these test pots on the top, which meant that I could move the hips, and I've now configured those so they move the hips and the ankles so I can test bending each leg. So now I can bend one leg with one pot, and I can bend the other leg with the other pot. which works pretty well. So now I just need to get the variables from those pots and make sure I can use the pressure sensors on the feet to modify those variables instead of turning the pots. So the important piece of code here is that we're driving the set point on each of those positions with the value which was the pots. So obviously on one leg it's pot one and on the other leg it's pot two. But instead of using those pots now, we're actually using the top and bottom pads on each side. And what we're doing is modifying that position. So pot one equals itself plus the top pad minus the bottom pad. And that means that value changes as I push it on each cycle, the code goes round, it gets bigger if I push the top one and smaller if I push the bottom one. And if I let go, I'm in the middle, then the value stays where it was, rather than springing back to the middle and the leg going back to the middle position. I've attached some Velcro straps to the feet with some metal plates. I've actually got something to keep my foot in the right place. And I've also attached some foam to the bottom of that pusher to just get the gap correct.
So that went pretty well. It essentially lifts its legs when I do, but you can see I'm having some trouble there trying to lift my legs and it feels like I'm laboring quite a bit trying to pull it along. And that's mainly because it's not as responsive as my legs. The main reason for that is that the motors aren't really talky enough. So I've got overhead to turn those up in code. And I tried that in one of those clips. You can kind of hear the motor grinding. It's trying to go, but it just can't do it because it hasn't got enough torque. So we could make those two or three times more responsive if the motor had more torque. So the motors I've put in there are quite small the four motors that drive the legs, there are actually some bigger motors available. So even with the same amount of current, they're much bigger diameter and therefore they have sort of more leverage to pull the load around. So I'm gonna upgrade all the motors to the motors that I used in the backboard, which is incredibly responsive and has incredibly good acceleration, much more than the skateboards I built with these small motors. So check that series out if you haven't seen it already. After that, hopefully it will be more responsive and I'll be able to actually pull my feet up. I need to tighten up those straps and sort out the foam padding so I don't have to move my feet so much and they're not as loose. And I do need a solution for actually fixing myself into this suit anyway, which I think is going to be big elasticated Velcro straps so I can kind of move a bit, but there's some constraint that keeps my feet and my hips in the suit. And after that, we can then put on the other sliders and try and coax it along a bit. But I'm not too unhappy with how it's going for now. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. It's also really important to say that most of my main build projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to all my videos early, a live stream with me and some other rewards. All right, that's all for now.